Okay, next we're going to take a look at the sends in Reaper. Now, if we make a new track and bring in some audio, let's drag this in. By default, we're going to hear it. And that's because in Reaper, by default, our tracks are sent to the master parent send. If we go to our routing right here and click it, it opens up this dialog. And right over here, is the master parent send. And like I said, this is on by default. If we turn it off and we hit play, the track plays, but we don't hear it because it's not sending at our master parent send, which is set up to our main outputs on our audio interface. So to see that, let's open up the routing matrix. Under view, go down right here, routing matrix which we could also open up by hitting a keystroke. On the PC, hit Alt-R. On the Mac, hit Option-R. That opens up this window here, where we can see the routing for our entire project. Now, right now, the project's pretty simple. There's only one track, acoustic guitar. But as you'll see later, this can get more complex. So like I said by default, the acoustic guitar goes to the master parent send which can be turned on and off right from here. It's off and we won't hear it, or it's on and we will. Now the master parent send right over here gets sent out to different outputs. By default, it's set to our main output, output one and two on our audio interface. But we could change that. If we turn it off here by deleting it and send it to our headphones instead. Now if we play it back, it still plays back, but we don't hear it in our main monitors. It's only playing on our headphones. Because the master parent send, which is where the guitar is going to, is going to a headphone output. And in my case, that's output three and four. But let's delete this and put it back on the main output. So right now, we're gonna hear it. Now, another way we could turn it on and off is by right-clicking the routing and changing it here. Right now it's on, and right now it's off. Now, we could also see it in the routing right here. Notice it's red. That means none of the audio is being sent anywhere. It's kind of a warning letting us know we're not going to hear it because the audio on the track isn't going anywhere. Right-click it again, turn it back on, and it looks like this with an M in the upper left corner, letting us know it's going to the master parent send. Now we could also turn it on and off with a modifier. On the PC, if you hold on Alt, and on the Mac, you hold on Option, and just click it, it toggles it. Right now it's off, so we don't hear it. And now it's on, and we do. So that's a quick shortcut. Instead of right clicking over here, or opening it up over here. But it's all doing the same thing. Now let's take a look at a bigger project. So in this project, we have five tracks. We have a kick, a snare, an open hi-hat, and two guitar tracks. One left and one right. Let's see what it sounds like. And right now, they're all going out to master parent send. As we can see up here, see the M on each track? But again, we could turn that off by right clicking and changing it here or doing the modifier. Alt on the PC, or Option on the Mac. But we could also do that using temporary groups. So we could select all the tracks and do it at once. Right click it. And now all the tracks are no longer being routed to the master parent send. So we're not going to hear them. So let's try bussing them to a different track. Let's make a new track down here. We'll call it bus. And let's send all these tracks to the bus track. Now there's a few different ways of doing this. We could use the routing matrix 
Here are tracks right here. Kick, snare, guitars. Mr. Parent Send is right here. And notice they turned off. But the bus track is still going out the Master Parent Send. But we could send the rest of them to a bus over here. Just follow the line for the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, and the guitars. Now, if you notice, there's an X over here. That's to prevent us from sending a track to itself. So we can't send our bus to our bus. That's just going to feed back. So now if we play it back, we hear the track. But we're not hearing it out of the master parent send. We're hearing it come out of the bus track, which is this track. So if we turn this off, it still plays, but we don't hear it. Because the sound is routed through this bus. So in this way, we could use this track as a submixer and adjust the volume of all of them here. Or mute them, or solo them. It's a great way of controlling them together by sending them all to a bus. Or we could add a cue or compression to all these sounds as a group. But if you also notice, up in these corners, in the routing, there's a little S, letting us know that these tracks are being sent somewhere. The M is gone, so it's not going to the master parent send, but the S lets us know it's being sent somewhere. In this case, to the bus or the bus track. So if we turn them back off over here, on the sends, they're going to track six, the bus. Now they all go back to red and they're not going anywhere. So we could right click and create our bus from here. On the sends, send them all to the bus. And now they're back here again. Now if we want to control the level being sent to the bus, we could do it on each track's routing. So if we go to our kick, right down over here is our send, with a volume, a pan, a mute. So we can mute the kick, and it's no longer going to the bus, even though the track is still unmuted. And we can create those sends right from this window as well. Let me delete it so you can see. We can create a send from here. Send it to our bus, and we have the same thing, with a volume, a pan, a mute. Now if you notice, our send's a post fader by default, which means our send is getting its level after the main fader, which means the main fader's level is gonna affect it. Let's take all these tracks, unsend them over here. Now they're no longer sent. And let's take our kick and just send that to a bus. So now all we're gonna hear is the kick. But because this send is post fader, this level matters. So if we pull this down, we don't hear it. So the channel signal flow starts at the fader and goes to the send. But if you want to separate them to have a completely independent send, we could change that here. Instead of being post fader, we'd switch it to pre fader. And now they're independent. So if we adjust this, It doesn't affect what's being sent to our bus, which is very useful for creating a headphone mix. Let me show you. Let's delete this. Now let's resend these tracks back to the bus. But before we do that, let's adjust the preference. Let's go to our preferences. And if we go down to track send defaults, we'll see that by default, our sends are gonna be post fader. But we could change that right here. Let's change them to be pre-fader, and let's change the default volume to be negative infinity or all the way down. This is a safer choice when using pre-fader sends, so our signal doesn't come through until we bring it up. So now if we create new sends, either through the matrix or by right-clicking, all those sends are gonna be pre-fader with the volume all the way down. So if we play it, we're not going to hear it yet. 
But if we go to the routing in the bus and look on this side, these are the receives on the bus track. This bus track doesn't have any sends, but it has receives which are mirrored from the other track sends. In other words, the same controls over here from the source can be controlled on this side, the destination. So now we have all these sends in one window, and they're all set to pre fader with the volume all the way down. So we can create a completely separate mix going to our bus, which would make a lot of sense if we wanted to create a separate headphone mix. So let's do that. Let's build a mix. Here's our kick. And because it's separate, we have to pan them separately too. So I created a whole separate mix just for the headphones. And just to make it easier to hear the difference, let's pretend the artist doesn't want to hear the hi-hat. So we could turn that down. So the artist is just hearing that mix. Then we can close this, send all these tracks back to the master parent send so we can hear the normal fader mix in the control room. Take this track out of the master parent send so the artist is not hearing a normal mix in their headphones and send this to a hardware output. In this case, it would be our headphones. We could also do that over here. Go to hardware output and send it directly to our headphones. So now the artist wearing headphones is hearing the mix we created without the hi-hat over here. But in the control room, we're hearing this mix because the master parent send is turned on. So we hear it with the hi-hat, but what they're hearing over here, let's put this back on and let's take it off of here. The artist wearing headphones is hearing this. So you can see how flexible sends can be. If you want to set up a separate bus for compression and put it over here, you can create your own mix, send it to the compressor, and blend that back in with the original uncompressed tracks, which is known as parallel compression. We could also use sends for effects returns, which I'll show you in the next video. But one other thing I do want to show you is that there's one other way you can create sends. Let's turn these all off in the routing matrix. Hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac to delete these so they're not sending to the bus. Let's go back to our preferences and switch this back to post fader, 0 dB. So right now, these tracks aren't being sent anywhere. They're not routed anywhere, so we're not going to hear them. But we could send them to the bus by dragging. Just go to the routing and pull it down and drop it on this track. See how our cursor changes? So it looks like a patch cable. If I drop it here, the kick is now routed here. I post fader, full volume. So we'll hear it. Do the same with the snare, just drag and drop it. Or the hi-hat. And you can drag it anywhere on the track. And it gets bust right to that track. So that's one other way to use sends. So now all the tracks are being sent to the bus. So let's hear them. Perfect. And like I said, sends are great for creating buses, creating headphone mixes, parallel effects, submixes for grouping similar tracks, and even for effects returns, which I'll show you in a bit. So anyway, that sends in Reaper. Let's move on. Oh!